everyone. I am Dr. Manisha Verma, teaching physics in Acharya Narendra Dev College, University of Delhi. I have started a lecture series on thermal physics and I have discussed various important topics pertaining to thermal physics. I have discussed heat engines, I have discussed real gases in detail. After that, I took up the kinetic theory of gases wherein I derived the Maxwell's law of velocities. After the kinetic theory, I took up thermodynamic potentials wherein phase changes were discussed, particularly a lot of emphasis was given on Clausius Clapeyron equation because of its importance. A number of problems have also been solved as you can see from my earlier lectures. Today, I will be starting a new topic in thermal physics, namely radiation. In these lectures, I will discuss what is meant by radiation, what is black body radiation, what are its important features, what are its applications, how to understand black body radiation, what is the black body spectrum, how to understand the black body spectrum, what are the various laws through which we can understand the black body spectrum. We will also be doing the classical theory of radiation and the quantum theory of radiation. So let me begin. To begin with radiation, first of all, I must make clear a few definitions few concepts and the symbols that are used to represent those concepts. So let me begin now. The first important parameter while to discuss in radiation is the energy density. It is represented by the symbol U. It is very important and it figures in basically all the laws which we will be deriving soon. So, what is the energy density? As is clear from the name, density, it means per unit volume has to be there. So, I can define that total energy density which is represented by symbol U is the total radiant energy per unit volume around a point for all the wavelengths taken together. It is represented by symbol U and its SI unit is joules per meter cube and the CGS units are erg per centimeter cube. The units are very important in solving all problems. As you all are aware, in a problem we have to solve using the same units, either we take all the parameters in SI units or we take all the parameters in the CGS unit. So, this is the total energy density. Now, let me define what is the spectral energy density. There is a difference. The total energy density is represented by symbol U, whereas the spectral energy density is represented by the symbol U lambda. Lambda is occurring in the subscript. The spectral energy density is defined with respect to a particular wavelength lambda as a measure of the energy per unit volume per unit range of wavelength. It means that u lambda d lambda denotes the energy per unit volume in the wavelength range lambda to lambda plus d lambda. In the previous slide, I had shown that the total energy density is for all wavelengths, whereas the spectral energy density is for a wavelength range which is generally taken to be from lambda to lambda plus d lambda. So, I hope the distinction between the energy density and the spectral energy density is clear to all. 
both are density, both are energy, but the previous one is for all wavelengths, whereas the spectral energy density pertains to a range of wavelengths. Therefore, we can say that a sum of spectral energy densities for all wavelengths from 0 to infinity per unit volume gives the total energy density that is I am relating the total energy density to the spectral energy density. How can we relate? We can relate it using the expression that u is equal to integral of u lambda d lambda. Both are density, both are energy one is for all wavelengths, the other is for a wavelength range. And again let me reiterate that the total energy density is measured in units of joules per meter cube in the SI units. Now let me define another very important parameter to study in black body radiation which is the total emissive power or emissivity represented by symbol small e. The total emissive power of a body is the radiant energy emitted per unit time per unit area of the body for all wavelengths taken together. As you can see again we have for all the wavelengths taken together what is important is that this energy has to be calculated per unit time per unit surface area. So, in problems the everyone should take care that if we are to calculate the total emissive power we have to take it per unit time per unit surface area. It is denoted by small e and for a perfect black body instead of small e we represent it by capital E to make a distinction between normal bodies and a black body, a perfect black body. Next let me de define what is the spectral emissive power. It is represented by the symbol E lambda. Lambda is occurring in the subscript corresponding to a wavelength lambda, it is a measure of energy radiated per second per unit area per unit wavelength. Therefore, E lambda d lambda denotes the energy emitted by unit area in one second in the wavelength range lambda to lambda plus d lambda. So again there is a distinction between the normal total emissive power and the spectral emissive power. The total emissive power is valid or is calculated for all the wavelengths whereas the spectral emissive power is calculated only for a particular wavelength range taken as lambda to lambda plus d lambda. As before we can calculate the total emissive power from the spectral emissive power also. That is a sum of spectral emissive powers for all wavelengths from 0 to infinity gives the total emissivity. That is small e is equal to integral of e lambda d lambda. What are the units of emissivity? As it is taken per unit area per unit time, so it is clear that the units of emissivity will be joules per meter square per second. Joules per meter square per second is watts. So, we can also say that the units of emissivity is watts per meter square. So, E and E lambda characterize the properties of the body as an emitter. Next let me define what is the spectral absorptivity. It is denoted by the symbol A lambda. It denotes the fraction 
of the incident energy of a particular wavelength absorbed by a unit surface area of a body in one second. So, you will appreciate that absorptivity is also taken per unit surface area per second. So, effectively A lambda is describing the properties of any body as an absorber of radiation. Let me tell you if a body absorbs all radiation incident on it then A lambda is taken to be 1 which is the maximum value and whenever A lambda is equal to 1 then that body is said to be a perfect black body. Why is this called a black body? Because this nomenclature is based on the surface on the color that we see due to selective absorption of light. The body which is a perfect black body appears to be black to the eyes. Text in a book appears black because letters in it absorb all other lights falling on them that is to say it absorbs all the wavelengths of uh, all the different wavelengths and only reflects the black color. Three physical quantities E, E lambda and A lambda depend upon the temperature and the nature of the surface of the body. When the radiation of a particular wavelength is incident on a body, what is possible? Three particular phenomena are possible. That radiation can be totally reflected, it can be totally absorbed, it can be totally transmitted or it can be partially reflected, it can be partially absorbed, it can be partially transmitted. So, all the three may independently occur or all the three may occur together or any two also may occur together. So, what makes a black body different from a separate body? A black body is a body which absorbs all the radiation incident on it. We can say that R lambda plus A lambda plus T lambda is equal to 1. What is R lambda, A lambda and T lambda? R lambda denotes the energy reflection coefficient, A lambda denotes the absorption coefficient, T lambda denotes the energy transmission coefficient of the body corresponding to the wavelength lambda. It means all the three quantities are spectral quantities rather than total quantities. If supposing T lambda is equal to 0, R lambda is equal to 0. That is the body is not transmitting radiation falling on it nor is it reflecting the radiation falling on it. Then by the above relation we have A lambda is equal to 1 that is the body is perfectly black for a given wavelength. Ideally it is not possible to get a body in which A lambda is equal to 1. So ideal black body is difficult to fabricate whereas more or less nearly black body we are able to fabricate easily and which I will briefly discuss also in the course of this lecture. Lamp black and platinum black are two substances which if we coat on a material then that material acts as a nearly black body almost a black body. Why? Because lamp black absorbs nearly 96 percent of visible light whereas the platinum black absorbs nearly 98 percent of the visible light. So, A lambda is less than unity but it is near unity. So, this is as far as possible that we get a perfect black body. Remember 
for a perfect black body a lambda has to be equal to 1 that is 100 percent the radiation falling on a black body is absorbed. To discuss the black body radiation further let me first tell you what is the pre washed theory of heat exchange. Remember every body emits heat radiations at all finite temperatures as well as it absorbs radiations from the surroundings. But there is a difference in the radiation emitted why a body at high temperature radiates more heat to the surroundings than it receives from it. This is very much clear because the final goal or the ultimate goal is to attain equilibrium. Similarly, we can say that a body at a lower temperature receives more heat from the surroundings than it loses to it. Again, the aim is the same to attain equilibrium between the body and the surroundings. pre applied the idea of thermal equilibrium to radiation. He suggested that all bodies radiate energy, but hot bodies radiate more energy than the cooler bodies. At one point of time, the rate of exchange of heat from both the bodies will become the same. Now the bodies will be said to be in thermal equilibrium. Only at absolute zero temperature a body will stop emitting. Therefore, in a nutshell we can say that the pre was theory states that all bodies emit thermal radiations at all temperatures above absolute zero irrespective of the nature of the surroundings. Ultimate goal is to attain thermal equilibrium. Now let me discuss what is the black body radiation and what are its unique properties. The thermal radiation which is spontaneously emitted by many ordinary objects can be approximated as black body radiation. Now let me discuss each property one by one. First property the black body radiation is the thermal electromagnetic radiation within or surrounding a body in thermodynamic equilibrium with its environment emitted by a black body. What is a black body? An idealized opaque non reflective body that is a body which is absorbing all radiation incident on it such a body if when it emits radiation that radiation is called the black body radiation and when it emits black body radiation again the goal is to attain thermodynamic equilibrium. Second property a black body radiation has a specific spectrum of wavelengths inversely related to intensity that depends only on the body's temperature which is uniform and constant. What does this mean? This means that when a black body is maintained at a constant temperature then the radiation emitted by it is going to be black body radiation which is dependent or which will be reflected in a specific spectrum of wavelengths and this radiation spectrum is dependent only on the temperature at which the black body is maintained. It does not depend upon the shape of the black body, it depends only on the temperature of the black body. Third property, the spectrum or the black body spectrum is seen to peak at a characteristic frequency which shifts to higher frequencies with higher temperature. 
and it is also seen that at room temperature most of the emission is in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have three regions infrared, visible and ultraviolet. So, at the room temperature the radiation is in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. More details about the black body spectrum will be discussed in the subsequent lectures. In this particular discussion, I am just giving you the basics of the black body radiation. Details will follow in the subsequent lectures. As the temperature increases past about 500 degrees, the black bodies start to emit significant amount of visible light that is the radiation can be seen in the visible part of the spectrum now. Next property, the black body radiation has a characteristic continuous frequency spectrum which depends only on the body's temperature and the principle of strict equality of emission and absorption is always upheld in a condition of thermodynamic equilibrium. So, th this is basically the first point and the second point that the frequency, the spectrum is continuous, it is not discrete, it does not break, it is not discontinuous and it depends only on the body's temperature. To reiterate, I again say that the nature of radiations emitted by a perfect black body depends only on the temperature of the black body and not on the mass, size, density or the nature of the body. For an ideal black body, the reflectance and the transmittance must be 0. As the temperature increases, the peak of the spectrum shifts from the infrared region towards higher frequencies of visible light and if it increases further then it shifts to the ultraviolet part also. So, I hope you have understood the basics of black body radiation. What is the black body radiation? What is the black body? What are the various important parameters required to understand the black body behavior? I will be starting with more details in my next lecture. Thank you.